Okay, in this video, we're gonna be doing uh, 2024 Calc AB and BC number three. It's like a slope field differential equation problem. Let's take a look. So the depth of seawater location can be modeled by the function H that satisfies the differential equation. DH dt is one half quantity H minus one cosine of T over two, where H of T is measured in feet and T is measured in hours after noon, which is T equals zero. It is known that h of zero equals four. For part a, a portion of the slope field for the differential equation is provided. Sketch the solution curve, y equals h of t, through the point zero four. So this is like, you're just dropping into flowing water and you follow along. So uh, zero four is where we should start. You can see it's marked on the grid. Um, and then just follow the lines, right? Imagine that it's a current, like you've dropped something into flowing water. This is basically what you're gonna do. Uh, and that's it. I don't know how they grade that thing, um, but I'm pretty sure that that's what the solution curve would look like. Let's take a look at part B. So, uh, sorry, hold on. Uh, between zero and five, it can be shown that H of T is greater than one. So H of T is greater than one, that's probably important. Um, if you look at the differential equation, it is important that H is greater than one because you have an H minus one there. So if H is greater than one, then H minus one is positive. So think about that. Find the value of t between 0 and 5 at which h has a critical point. So a critical point would be when dh dt is equal to 0 or undefined, but I think in this case we're just looking for dh dt to equal 0. Now we definitely know that h minus 1 is greater than 0, so nothing is going to come from there. So really we would just be looking for where cosine of t over 2 is equal to 0. Um, so we think about it and we know that uh, one way of doing this is that the cosine of pi over 2 is equal to 0, so t is equal to pi. Another way of doing it is to say that um, t over 2 must equal pi over 2, and therefore t would equal pi. However you get to it, t is definitely going to be equal to pi in this case. So now what we need to do is figure out, so that's our critical point, um, determine whether the critical point corresponds to a relative minimum, maximum, or neither. If you think back to the slope field, uh, it's definitely a relative maximum. We just have to like justify that it's a relative maximum. So let's see uh, what we can do. I'm going to find the second derivative. So I find with the differential equations, you pretty much always do the second derivative test. So we're going to do first, so 1 half h minus 1, derivative of the second. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine, but a 1 half, so negative 1 half sine of t over 2. Um, so that's first derivative of the second plus second, which is cosine of t over 2 times the derivative of the first, don't forget the derivative of h is dh dt, so this will be 1 half dh dt. And now what we need to do is figure out if this thing is positive or if it's negative. I'm expecting uh, this to work out to be negative because I think we're getting a relative maximum, but there's a bunch of stuff that we know, right? We know that h is greater than one, we know that the sine of pi over two is one, and we also know that at t equals, um, pi over two, no, sorry, t equals pi, uh, dh dt is zero, right? Because it's a critical point. So the second part of this just drops out, right? The cosine t over two times one half times dh dt, that's just zero. So we have one half times a positive number times negative one half times one. So one half times negative one half is negative one fourth times a positive number. So we can conclude that the second derivative is definitely a negative num number on this interval. We don't even know what it is. We just know that it's negative um, at pi. And so if the first derivative is zero, the second derivative is negative. By the second derivative test, we know that we are at a relative maximum. So let's write that up. Since dh dt is equal to zero, the second derivative is less than zero. h has a relative maximum at t equals pi. Let's take a look at the last part of this question. Okay, this one's not surprising. Use separation of variables to find y equals h of t, the particular solution uh, to the differential equation with initial condition h of zero equals four. Step one, we're gonna separate. I'm gonna leave the one half on the right-hand side and I'm just gonna bring the h minus one over. So I'm gonna have dh over h minus one is equal to one half cosine of t over two. I think that that was a smart choice. Um, you can still solve it if you bring the one half over. It doesn't really make a difference, but I think it's a little easier to leave it this way. Some integral signs. On the left-hand side, we're gonna get uh, natural log absolute value of h minus one equals, on the right-hand side, this is perfect already, right? If you let u equal t over two, then du um, is gonna be one half dt. 
Oh, I forgot a DT in this. Uh, I don't believe that you lose any points for that, but I did forget uh, DT. So I don't know. I mean, like, I don't think you lose points, but I kind of think you should lose points because, like, it's separation of variables, and I just lost a DT. But, uh, well, I put it in now. So integrating this gives you sine of T over 2. Again, I don't think you would lose points, but I do think you should lose points. Uh, plus C goes on the side with the independent variable, which in this case is T, so sine of T over 2 plus C. If your dependent variable is inside a natural log, you want to exponentiate before you solve for C. So here we're going to get H minus 1 is C e to the sine of T over 2. So I have a bunch of videos where I explain what's exactly happening there. You should definitely look them up if you're not sure. Uh, and then we need to solve for C, so we're going to use H of 0 equals 4, and we'll plug in so we get um, 3 is equal to C e to the sine of 0. The sine of 0 is um, the sine of zero is 0, so it's e to the 0, which is 1, so we now know that C is 3. And then we just want to combine everything so that we have our final answer. So H of t is going to be 1 plus 3 e to the sine of t over 2. Uh, and that's the entire problem. Pretty good, straightforward problem. Uh, I hope this was helpful, and good luck.